Hey there everyone, this is Cameron Harris again, and welcome back to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. This is episode number four, and today we're going to be talking about the Selection Tool. This is the first in a series of episodes we're going to do that focus on the tools you use when you actually start modeling something. Now I realize that the Selection Tool may seem like a very basic tool. I mean, how hard can it be? You click on something to select it. But we're going to go even deeper than that. The selection tool actually has a lot of different ways it can be used. And we're also going to be talking about how things are constructed within SketchUp. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. So I'm just going to launch this selection file I've prepared for this episode. And you can see it's not very exciting, but you know, it's just pretty basic, two cubes. But this is really going to help illustrate what you can do with the selection tool and how you're supposed to use it. For one thing, let's just learn about where the selection tool is. It looks just like your cursor. It's right up in the top left of the menu bar by default. I'm sorry, the toolbar. And it's also in the top left of your tool palette. And you can just, if I select something else, you can see right there. It also has a keyboard shortcut applied to it, which is pretty simple. If you're on some other tool and you need to get to the selection tool, all you have to do is hit the space bar. The space bar takes you right to it no matter what. And uh, memorize that shortcut because the selection tool is the one you will always go back on. So if you're on something else, you're always going to end up back to the selection tool. Now let's talk about how exactly the selection tool works. So you can see I've got these cubes here, we're only going to concentrate on one for the moment. And if I just kind of zoom in on it, we can get a better idea. Now the way the selection tool works, well to understand the way the selection tool works, you have to kind of understand how SketchUp works. Uh, so here we have, if we're just concentrating on this cube here, we have a pretty simple three-dimensional object, a cube, which is made up of six sides. It's arranged in a perfect uh, square on each one. Um, so pretty simple. But how is this actually constructed? It, all objects in SketchUp are made up of two types of objects. There are lines and then there are faces. Really when you're working in SketchUp all you're doing is you're drawing lines in three dimensions. So for example you can see here there are these black lines circling these rectangles which are making up this cube. Using the selection tool I can click on one of these lines and you can see that line turns blue. I can click on this line or this line. They're all separate objects. At the same time I can click on these faces which are the white parts that fill in between the lines. If I click that it kind of shades it in with these, all these little blue dots. I can select this face or this face. Pretty basic stuff but these things the way they're built and the way they're assembled is a little bit interesting. For example, let's say I wanted to delete uh, this line. I can select this line so it turns blue, and then to delete something I just hit the delete key. Well now, what, what just happened there? The line went away, obviously, but these two faces that it was connected to also went away. Now why is that? Well that's because when we're in SketchUp we're not creating faces we're creating lines and the faces are created in accordance with those lines. So a face to survive, basically a face to exist, needs to be surrounded on all sides by lines. If there's a gap in its outer border, the face won't exist. So you can see here, we had this top face right here, it had a line on this side, a line on this side, a line on this side, and a line on this side, but when we removed the line here, this face was no longer contained, and it just disappeared. And the same thing happened on this side face. Now if I were to put that line back, and we'll learn how to do this in a later episode, I put the line back, the faces reappear. By default, whenever a shape is enclosed on all sides by lines, a face automatically appears. Now you don't need to have that happen. So for example, I could select this face and delete it. And you can see the face goes away, but the lines remain because lines and faces are actually separate and very distinct objects. So 
if I wanted to get that face back, I could just redraw a line on one of the sides and it recognizes that border as a new set of lines and then it recreates the face. So it's pretty simple once you kind of wrap your mind around it. And uh, these don't have to be squares either. You can draw circles, you can draw triangles, any kind of shapes. If I were to draw on, uh, on this side right here, for example, if I were to draw something like this and then something like that, that and that, the minute I enclose it, it automatically fills in with this, uh, with this face. Now I'll just go ahead and get rid of that real quick. So the way the selection tool works is you just click anywhere on a face to select it and you click on a line to select it. Now the lines can get a little bit tricky, you gotta be a little bit precise because they're so thin, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. Now what if I wanted to uh, delete this whole top here? So like for example, I can select this face and I delete it, but oh, I also wanted to delete all these lines uh, so that we're surrounding it, the whole unit, kind of. Well, if I just undo that, Command Z will undo. What I can do is I can select the face. Now that selects the face. Now I could, of course, select the face and delete, and then select each individual line, delete, 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 and that would just take forever. That's why in SketchUp, all you have to do is double click on a face. So just two clicks in rapid succession on any face, double tap, selects the face as well as any lines that are creating it. And that's also a nice little tip to see what lines are forming this face. What does it need to exist? If any one of these lines were to not, you know, just to say they were, we were to delete them or they were to just disappear, if any one of these lines wasn't here, this face wouldn't exist. So now that we have all that selected, we can delete that. And then you can see <laughs> we're left with a very sad little cube or what used to be a cube. All that's left now is a couple lines, a face, and a memory. So you can see here that um, because we deleted the top uh, lines on all these side pieces, the side pieces all went away as well, but we didn't affect this bottom face. It's still enclosed on all sides, so it still has its face. We're just going to undo that. Now, what if I wanted to delete this whole unit here, so this whole cube? Well, again, I could double click this and delete it and then double click this face down here and delete it. And then I could select these lines individually and delete them. But that's not very, <laughs> that's not very quick. It's pretty complicated, it takes forever. So there's a much simpler way to do this. Triple clicking on a face, triple click. That's not something you do very often in a computer, but triple clicking, one, uh, one, two, three, three taps right after another, will select the face, the lines surrounding the face, as well as any lines and faces that are connected to it. So anything that is linked to what we clicked on will be selected. Now I can just delete the whole thing, poof, gone. Now this isn't the same as selecting all. For example, if I were to click on a face or line and say Command A, you can see it selects everything. It selects all of the lines and all the faces in the entire model, including this cube next to it. Triple clicking selects this entire cube, but not the cube next to it, because this cube, you can see, there's a gap. It's its own entity. That is the big difference. Now, if we were to, for example, draw a line between the two and kind of connect them, and then go back to the selection tool by hitting spacebar, click somewhere in this green area or this blue area, just somewhere where there isn't a line or a face. You can see, selected, click somewhere else, deselects everything. Triple click. And you can see it selected that line, but that line isn't connected to another line here. It doesn't always work the way you think it will but after a while you kind of get used to the physics and it just kind of becomes second nature to you. So now that we have these lines are all connected, so this block should now be connected to this block, double click, it now selects all that because they're actually connected. We don't want them connected anymore, we can just delete, delete. 
So that's the basics of the selection tool. Um, you can also drag to select multiple objects. Now, dragging will create what they call a marquee. So you see, click and drag, that's a marquee. So anything that's within that selection box will get selected. But you'll notice, well, I'm dragging over all these lines, but only that one line is being selected. Why is that? Well, the selection tool in SketchUp is very powerful, and it takes a little bit of getting used to. If you drag a marquee, starting here, if I drag from left to right, like that, left to right, it will only select things that are entirely contained within this marquee. So like you can see, this line here, entirely contained in that marquee. These other lines here go past the marquee. They aren't fully contained. If I went like this, then you can see all these lines in that entire face was contained within that marquee. But if I were to drag a marquee from right to left, you can see left to right, it's a solid box. Right to left, it's a dotted box. I drag, and look at that. Even though this line, for example, you see, this line right here is not fully contained within this marquee, but I release and it selects it. Anything that is within the marquee, even if just one little inch is within this marquee here, it will become selected. So that's a very handy way to select multiple objects. If you need to get very detailed though, sometimes the marquee doesn't really work. It'll select things you don't want it to. So for example, let's say I wanted to select uh, just these three lines right here. Well, I could drag a marquee right here. Those three lines are selected, but I don't want to select those faces. What I can do is I can select one of the lines using the uh, select tool, and holding down shift, you notice when I hold down shift, I get my cursor with a little plus and a minus symbol next to it. I can add or detract from my selection. So I can click now on this line here, and it becomes active as well as the other one. Click on this line here, bingo. I've got them all three selected, and now I can do whatever I want to them. I can also select another face, or let's say I didn't mean to select that face. If it's already selected, I click it again, takes it away from the selection. So it's pretty simple. Just click elsewhere to deselect. Once you understand the laws of SketchUp and how it really works, you can really start to understand it a lot better and its tools will all start to make much more sense, particularly the selection tool. Well, that's about it for this episode. I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of it and learned a bit more about the selection tool. It's a deceiving little tool because it seems simple on the surface, but it really is very deep underneath. And we're going to continue talking about these tools uh, in future episodes. In the meantime, be sure to visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com and send us an email if you have any questions or comments at harwoodpodcast at comcast.net. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling. <laughs>